This is Duke University. So if somebody has a hundred bucks to spend on a ticket or yep. two or three for this coming season and isn't particularly into the arts, what would you say is like the best bet of two or three performances that you would recommend? Okay. Um, I would, I would uh, for sure go and see Louis Lorty playing the Chopin Etudes, the complete Chopin Etudes. Um, you know, you won't have another opportunity to see that. Well, you might not have, it's, it's, it's rarely does someone take on the complete Chopin Etudes in a single program. Um, and rarely are you going to have someone of Lorty's caliber coming by to play it. I think that this Hallelujah Train project at Haytai is a, 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 you know, a, a, once, a once only thing. I'll give you four. Well, maybe I'll give you five. Um, <laughs> I think that, uh, uh, yeah, if you're a student, you can go to 20. And you know, the thing about student tickets is it's two per ID. So you know, if you're trying to uh, you know, get in good with a professor, or you have a favorite staff member, or you just see someone who looks like they need art, um, <laughs> You, you could buy them a, a ticket. Uh, a couple other things. Um, well, we're doing, the classical, we're doing the Classical Theater of Harlem's production of Waiting for Godot, which is set against the backdrop of, of uh, post-New Orleans Katrina. Um, there's a totally compelling video of the making of that project. So they, quick history on it, they did it right after Katrina. Then, then the multimedia artist, uh, mixed media artist Paul Chan brought them down to New Orleans. They performed it as a piece of street theater in New Orleans in front of 10,000 people um, in the, on the porch of a, of a flooded out house in the Ninth Ward. Um, that is the backdrop of this piece. Uh, and there's a video on our website of sort of the making of it in Katrina, which is, uh, I think, compelling enough to to want to see it. Um, uh, the final thing I would probably pitch is this project we're doing with Alonzo King Lines Ballet and Jason Moran. Uh, Jason Moran's a jazz pianist um, who, with whom we've worked a lot uh, uh, and, uh, and about whom people think uh, very highly, including myself, uh, think that he's uh, in a lot of ways represents the future of jazz uh, or a future of jazz. I should say that, a future for jazz, uh, his work. Um, Alonzo King Lines is a contemporary ballet company out of San Francisco that uh, doesn't see a whole lot of time in the Southeast, uh, does a week maybe in, in New York every year. Um, we are so I, I, through Duke performances, Jason Moran and Alonzo King Lines Ballet were introduced. Alonzo has worked with Pharaoh Sanders in the past as well as Zakir Hussein a whole bunch. Um, Jason is writing a piece for them, a 30 minute piece, which will see its East Coast premiere here. In addition, um, Alonzo King has been, so that's one piece on that program. And in addition, Alonzo King has been asked to write, to choreograph a new version of Scheherazade, the Ballet Russe masterpiece, uh, for, for, Mon for the Monte Carlo Ballet, which is the sort of living incarnation of Ballet Russe. Um, that piece, uh, with music by Zakir Hussein, Zakir will not be playing the music live. Jason Moran will be playing the music live for his piece here. So the Scheherazade piece, music by Zakir Hussein, it will receive its American premiere here at Duke. Um, and so it's in January, right at the end of January, and Lines will also be here, for, the Lines Ballet will be here for about nine days doing um, master classes. I should add that when we had Lines here in the past, they um, sold out and again sold about 40 to 50% to students. Um, Contemporary ballet, who knew? You know, so those are some things that I, would, that I would recommend, although in a lot of ways I would recommend the whole season. <laughs>